<laughs> okay, screw it. I promised this to myself. This is my very last take. Because, sorry, not sorry. If I have to do something like this to a microphone so it won't jump out of the recorder and it happens in both versions and I just noticed that afterwards in editing, after I've lost like two, three hours, I think it's understandable that I am a little bit close to insanity and it's days like this one today where I'm super happy that I'm not a professional and I can pull off a video like this and get away with it because I would just say let's have fun in this video a little bit sarcastic I will be yes but the information will be solid so third TV review I started actually at the very top with a three and a half thousand euro or three and a half thousand dollar 65 inch OLED TV to see what's pretty much the best possible thing you can get and I said I want to go down a little bit further to see what we get when we make some compromises and therefore just pay noticeably less and today I went all the way to the bottom when it comes to the price with the let me check that higher U45 H7000 not that the name really matters since it's the only available 4k HDR TV available on GearVest and since I'm already mentioning GearVest, I should mention also a few things so you don't get bothered too early. Things like shipping, the price and warranty. So price, 430 euros for the 49 inch version, 520 euros for the 55 inch version, and then just at 100 or roughly that in terms of dollars and you have the US pricing. Which is something that maybe won't help you in terms of shipping, because this won't actually get shipped out of China, but from a European warehouse. So everyone who orders this, in Europe, we'll actually get it within three to five days. I think I needed like four days. How it's in the US, I don't know. But in terms you think you have to ship it actually back to China on your own, no, you don't because they have a local pickup service. So in case something would happen, you're actually covered, you're good to go. And I think that should take away quite a lot of things that you should be concerned about if you are thinking about buying something like this online. So, and yes, in case you actually care about or notice that I'm doing this whole review in my sweatpants, yes, I did, because I already was done with the recording and I just had to do it over and I just didn't see the need to change clothes again. But let's talk about the appearance, not of me, but of the TV. 49 inches with a slim bezel. <laughs> slim. This is not really slim, but it's okay. The foot is okay because you can actually assemble this within like five minutes. It's so lightweight that when I took it out of the box, I actually thought there is nothing in the box itself, but it is so. You can do this on your own, absolutely no problem. Now, when it comes to the ports, you get the most basic ones. Okay, you don't get an optical out, you don't get a chinch out, but in case you want to use maybe a sound bar or something like that, you still have the 3.5 millimeter jack that also works as a line out and you can plug that for example, on a soundbar, which I would definitely recommend because when it already comes to the sound, ooh, it's okay, it's there, but it's quite hollow, it's quite shallow, so don't expect too much. And I would just say one thing in general, if you buy yourself ever a TV, invest a little bit more money in a proper separate sound system like a soundbar or a speaker system because obviously sound is very important for me but get something decent you can use this for multiple TVs in the future because these usually don't break so this is a one-time investment and you should definitely do that now what else is there to say let's talk a little bit about the remote that I have here and it's big but it's also hollow and lightweight like the TV on its own the ergonomics are fine you reach the most important buttons quite at the bottom but actually you won't use many of these because of the smart, func smart TV functionality that is not really all that present <laughs> but I'll go into that later on but the remote is okay it gets the job done yeah that's it about that so what I want to talk actually next about is already the qualities before we are going into a few other things because in case things look a little bit dull this is just because I had to lower the brightness for the camera and so on so also if some things on the sides look a little bit not that uniform this is actually the whole room reflecting which is actually not a huge issue because if you have it don't not too bright the reflections are actually quite okay viewing angles also from most angles are fine of course if you have extreme angles colors and stuff will wash out but the white actually if I just look at it on my own and I'm not quite sure how this looks on camera even though I have checked it is very uniform actually uniform more uniform than on some others now the black I've tried to actually capture it a little bit with some exposure set higher to, for you to be able to see the backlight bleed but for some reason I had too much different light coming from all directions today so it didn't work but I can tell you this much. 
This TV is not super bright and you actually have to lower the maximum brightness so you get a good black because out of the box it came with like 100% of backlight brightness and then we had massive corner uh, light bleed in the four corners. But if you adjust things normally, things are actually nothing you should be bothered about because this is actually something that I want to go into already now. Obviously here are the settings and for example, it actually doesn't delay that much as you can see, things work out quite fast. Now let's get back and talk about things like the sound we don't have to cover. As you can see, you get the typical options, you get the most ones. You get installation, which I didn't check because I don't have a cord or satellite anymore. But pretty much forget the rest, so all you have to check is pretty much the picture settings. That's the only thing that you will actually use. For me, this TV is actually more like a monitor. And then you have different presets. You can change the contrast, brightness, sharpness, but under energy saving you can see the backlight which is something a little bit different because you don't just adjust the brightness but also the backlight and this works kind of coherent. So I, for example, in normal use had it at 43% of brightness with 75% of backlight. Yeah. This seemed good because if you go brighter, of course you get a brighter display, but then blacks suffer way too much and they already look a little bit on the bluish side, which you could correct actually if we check the settings here. You could correct these in the advanced settings. There is a little bit of a delay, but the remote usually works out quite fine in red school. You can see we have dynamic contrast, noise reduction, you can change the color temperature, which I had to because out of the box it was way too warm. You can change that though, the picture zoom, film mode, skin tones, color shift and full HDMI range, but maybe you have noticed this, there is no mentioning of HDR, which this TV seems to have, but I would say it's not really there, because high dynamic range means it can get very bright and it can get very dark, but this one can do either one or the other. It first of all doesn't get super bright, but it also doesn't get super dark, and if you put the backlight so down below, then you get a good black, then the display is just not kind of impressive enough, it does, doesn't have the vibrancy anymore. So I would just tell you this, find a good balance, for me it was 70% backlight with 45% of brightness and then you got the best compromise of a still solid black. Obviously it's not on a high-end level because you will notice that, even though I have to say the good thing about the black levels are and the kind of contrast and so on, that we don't really have any sort of banding or something. So that was actually good to see, so the qualities are good. Now when it comes to the sharpness I have to mention one thing. I had to set it from 50% to 20% because with about 50% or kind of that or even higher you get double conscious over text, you get like a white glow around. If you pull it all the way down then that is pretty much gone but then the display just isn't so sharp anymore and some people say you should get rid of the sharpness anyways completely on a 4K TV. I would disagree. So a little bit is good and the better TVs they get away with a little bit more sharpening without that glow. So 20 works fine for me but the good thing is actually you only notice that for example in the browser with a little bit of glow when it's actually fine with 20 but for movies and all that kind of things you actually won't bother at all about that and colors I think look really nice. They actually cover that right well once you check to be properly having adjusted the white balance. And then for example like here the gray, it doesn't look perfectly uniform, I get that, but that is just because of the room reflecting too much and I can't really change so much about that. But the next thing I want to talk about obviously is a little bit of some video and I hope I will find it quickly enough. And I, I'm a little bit more calm already, <laughs> I think that's a good sign. What I'm actually looking for is the, the football game because as you have seen we don't have many post-processing settings which means there is not much post-processing going on which is actually a good thing because especially on sports the more you do the more artifacts you get the more issues you get not a thing here there is not a whole lot of motion blur going on no real ghosting picture seems quite sharp even in motion so it's actually really good for, for sports I really like that but I guess we should more talk about gaming which I have to say also due to the fact that there is no post-processing going on or at least pretty much nothing, the input delay is super low. I've tried with games and so on and especially since most people will use a TV after all with wireless peripherals and the controller, the delay is pretty much 
nothing you should be concerned about because it's so minimal that it's maybe actually more of a delay from the wireless controllers than from the screen. So I was fully pleased by that. Yes, it maybe is possible to be even better, but I did not see any difference to the higher end ones that I had already. Also, not really any ghosting, no banding. Now HDR, I wanna get into that a little bit. The only game that I have that I can try it with is F1 2017, but what I've noticed there that it's pretty much not really usable because if you have it off, you see, for example, the sky with clouds and all that. But once you enable HDR, it's just white. It's completely blown out and you can adjust some settings and so on, but that I could not fix. So I would say, even though it's good for gaming without any blur and reacts very well and it's a great experience, it's good. Not, not sure where I wanted to go with that. But this is actually what, what I would recommend this TV for. If you have a younger son or something, if you are the parents who are buying, but for younger people who are on a lower budget, like teens and so on, or maybe the parents don't want to buy them something expensive that they could break, this is a very nice entry level because you get quite good qualities from this screen. So all fine. Now my own picture actually looks quite accurate, I have to say, I was pr impressed with that. And something that I want to get into is something that someone actually asked me in the comments is how well does it work with 720p and how well work it does with 1080p, because still not everyone can use 4K. Here, I gotta say, actually nice, because even though 4K does not look that much better than 10K, uh, 1080p compared to some higher end TVs because of the sharpness that you have to reduce and so on, it maintains a very nice crisp picture in 1080p and 720p as well as long as the quality obviously is good enough. I wouldn't go really that much lower because after all then the resolution is just not good enough. But this screen makes a good appearance once you set it up right and the viewing angles are fine, the black levels are okay. Obviously that's something where higher end TVs just know to impress more. But I have no real complaints with the actual qualities of this panel. But what I have a problem with is Smart TV options. I've already talked a little bit about this, but I have to get into this since I almost forgot it. There is a Netflix app and there is a YouTube app. But let's just forget that since the Netflix app, once you actually start it, kind of makes the TV freeze for like 10 seconds and I thought now it's over, but after 10 seconds you can actually move stuff and you can select a show or a movie but it just won't play. I've tried it a dozen times and maybe I need to upgrade something in the software or something like that, but I would just expect out of the box for 4K or Netflix in general just to work and it didn't, I didn't really want to bother much about more about that. Tried YouTube, same with YouTube. So my recommendation here is that you just have to get an external box, which actually already brings me to the conclusion. This TV obviously has some downsides. It's not perfect, but I can still recommend it on a quite good budget in some things we have to consider. In some things? I don't know. Now, what are the major weaknesses? First of all, smart TV. Forget that. You need an extra box, which costs extra money. Speakers aren't good. You will need something like that additional, so it also costs. Even though, like I said, this is something that I would invest anyways and something you should not really ex look at extra price. The only thing that is kind of like extra cost for this TV is the additional smart TV function. But other than that, the foot works good. You can mount it to the wall. You can have it on your desk. The remote works. Picture qualities are absolutely nice. For this price, I have to say, I actually expected way less. Of course, if you want something brighter, black suffer. If you want proper HDR, get something else. If you well, just a better picture, get something else, but then you also will have to pay noticeably more. But just considering 400 euros or 500 dollars, this TV, just in terms of picture quality, does not do much things wrong. If I would wanna improve some things, obviously the black levels would be the main thing, higher brightness would be nice, but it's not really necessary. Obviously in this price range, I mean, Yes, there are some post-processing settings that would be nice if they would be implemented well. For example, if you have lower quality content, then you just see a little bit more noise, but no banding, ghosting or so. At least for this level, I was pleased with that. The little bit corner bleed that I had was also not an issue because if you set the brightness right, then it's actually so minimal and so uniform that I was actually very pleased with the white and back black levels. So. The last thing that I just want to show, uh, tell you about is that in case you think about buying this, I would still maybe at least recommend you to check local stores to see what established brands offer. Because for example, a colleague of mine paid 550 euros, 
which is still noticeably more than this, but for a Sony 49 inch, also with 4K HDR. So you pay a little bit more, but you get a reputable brand with smart TV functionalities that should actually work. You will get a local support, but even though that's not a problem since we have local pickup here, but yeah, overall, Obviously, it's not mind-blowing. Obviously, it's not the very best one out there and I don't want to push it any more than it has to be. But for 400, you can't expect too much. So who would I recommend this to? Now, in case local prices are still higher than something you want to or you can afford, and this one is in your price, but I would say mostly younger people, people who want this as a kind of solution until they have the money to get something better for their kids. So if, if something breaks, it's not too bad and the experience will be fine, especially for games and so on. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so actually I just hope, let me check this, if this is still recording and it does. So I'm happy with if things worked out well. So. In case I forgot something, just let me know in the comments and I will cover it. I hope it was entertaining enough, it was informational enough and I hope you want to see some more and maybe reshare this video, comment on it, give it a like and then we'll see us next time again. Okay, so until next time, bye.